Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, members. We want to bless the Lord so much for today. Number one, for the gift of life. During this season around, that we wake up alive, both sound in spirit and in the body. We cannot uh, fail to remember our brethren and lovers of the group who are still in a very dangerous situation of the COVID-19. What we are praying to God that he will uh, take that situation and, and, and bring it to normal. For there is nothing difficult to our God. Father God, we thank you for today. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. The one who teaches us. The one who gets things that belong to you and gives us. We thank you for the name of Jesus. For there is no any other name that was given man to be saved except the name of Jesus. And Father, even as we are going to share this word, we pray that you enable us to hear exactly what you want us to hear. May you enable us to see what you want us exactly to see. And at the end of the day, may all the glory remain yours. In Jesus' name. Oh, how I love Jesus. 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 Because he first loved me. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. I love Jesus. Today, let's go straight into the word of the Lord. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 15. We shall be reading from verses number 1 to verse number uh, 9. Will you bring us the New Living Translation? Yes. My Bible says, One day Samuel said to Saul, It was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people Israel. Now listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heavens, uh, heaven's armies has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now 
abameleki beyakola israeli now go and completely destroy the entire Malachite nation, men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. And donkeys. So Saul mobilized his army at Telaim. There were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 men from Judah. Then Saul and his army went to a town of the Amalekites and lay in wait in the valley. Saul na tuka kuchibuga cha Amalaki na natega mochiwamvu. Saul sent this warning to the Kenites: Move ah. away from where the Amalekites live, or you will die with them. For you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up from Egypt. So the Kenites packed up and left. Saul na gamba abakeni nti mugende muvewo muserengete okuva mu bamaliki neme okubazikiriza awamu nabo kubanga mwakola byekisa abana ba Israeli bonna Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from Havila all the way to Shal east of Egypt Saul na kuba bamaliki okuva e Kavira mm. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everyone else. Now, Amba Agagi, Kabaka Waba Meriki, Nazikiris, a Dala Abantu, Na, no, no, Woji, or which Dala. So, and his men spared Agagi's life and kept the best of the sheep and goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything, in fact that appealed to them they destroyed only what was worthless or of poor quality ne saulo nabantu be ne basonyiwa agagi ne ndiga eza singa obulunji ne nte ne bya sava nabana bendiga ne birunji byonna ne baga ne bagana okubizikiriza dala na yebi bibyo na era bitali bya muwendo ebyo ne babizikiriza dala so I, i go back to verse number 2 zize kulinyirirwa okubiri this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek. Today's message says, God has decided to settle accounts with your enemy. And our understanding would be, you paraphrase it to the uh, current Rwanda, whereby you say, God has decided to set accounts with your enemy. Katonda Sazeo, Oksotinga Avarabebo. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God has decided to settle accounts with your enemy. Men and the women of God. Our God is a God of time and season. According to the wisest man, all of us we know, Solomon, who has ever lived on the planet. Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 3 and verse number 1. 3 and 1. He says, for everything there is a season. A time for every activity under heaven. I want you to look at it in the book of Exodus chapter number 17. Look at it from verse number 8. Exodus chapter number 7. Now Amalek came forth with Israel in Lephedim. While the people, I said 17 verses number 8. Okay. While the people of Israel were still at Lephedim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. 
Musa nagamba yoswa nti otulonde rabantu ogende orwane naba meriki. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hal climbed to the top of the nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Ntiaurwatuka, Musa boya imusa omukono gwe Israeli na goba. Boya gusa omukono gwe abamerikin eba goba. Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hal found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses holding up his hands. So his hands held steady until sunset. Na ye mikono jam Musa nejitende walirwa. Nebatwala e ginger, nebari teka wan siwe, nali tula ko, aloni nech ne kuri, nebal nebawani de mikono je, omwe ruyo erumu, e mikono je jinwe jinwera o kutusa in jubo kugwa. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalk in battle. Joshua na sula Ameriki, Navan tube, no boji owechitala. After the victory. The Lord instructed Moses Write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder And read it aloud to Joshua I will erase the memory of Amalek from under heaven that was in Exodus. The Lord has sworn. And he tells Moses to do what? Write this as a reminder. And let it be permanent. I will erase the memory of Amalek from under heaven. So when we come to the book of Joshua chapter 15, God comes and says, the time has come. I want to settle my accounts with Amalek. I came to speak to you and myself. In God's due time, He's going to settle accounts with your enemy. Because He has ever done it. And if He did it one time, He can, he can do it the second, the third, and the fourth. Praise be to God. God promised to erase out America completely. I wanted to name anything that is chasing you. Seemingly, it might be a stumbling block. It might be a Lord Brock. In Luganda, there is, you can see, Omulemesa. But one time I had someone called Karemesa. <laughs> <laughs> and I wondered why the, the, the parents had to name someone that, that kind of name. So, so name, name it. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's a curse. It's an ending problem. Is it poverty? Is it educational status? Is it there's no marriage? Name it. But I came to speak to you that God has promised he's going to settle those accounts. The question is when did Today, Lero, tonight, e tomorrow, encha, God has said, katonda agambie, He has sent His servant. Nti and Joshua comes and speaks to Samuel, comes and speaks to, to, to uh, 
So, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies he has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek. So if God has ever decided, he can decide even today. And I hear a big amen from someone. He can decide even today to settle accounts with your enemy. Come on, praise the Lord. In the books of accounts, as someone who studied accounts, when we talk about settling accounts, we might be meaning several things. When you say, come on, please, can we settle accounts? Maybe someone is talking to you that you need to settle your debts. Maybe he's talking to you that the auditors are going to come. When we talk about settling accounts, somebody who has settled accounts begin to think about a reconciliation books, cash books, and those who are in the office begin to panic. And that's when you hear that this building got burnt. The files got lost. This so and so disappeared. And the point is somebody said we have to set our accounts. Praise be to God. I want you now to figure out when God speaks out and the devil hears and his demons that God is going to set our accounts. Hallelujah. So, Put yourself in the position. The sovereign Lord of the armies of heaven has decided to come to set accounts with your enemy. Remember me, I'm weak. You are also weak. But the sovereign God the, the, the leader of the armies of heaven has declared I want to set accounts with your enemy. So as I was writing this message down, I was in my heart, my heart was bubbling. Let the, let the, let the sovereign Lord settle the accounts of the Indians with this COVID-19. Because he has declared the time has come. Look at it in the book of Numbers, chapter number 24. And verse number 20. I wanted to bring the, the message. And, and we see what the message says. 24 and verse number 20. The Bible says, Then Balaam spotted Amalek and delivered an oracle message. And he said, Amalek, you are in first place among nations right now. But you are going to come in the last the sovereign Lord has declared your enemy has been fast he has been on the front in chasing you but now an oracle has come out it's going to be rained the time has come its destiny is destruction I want you my brother my sister to cheer up when God's time has come that which has been chasing you I want to speak as Balaam spoke. Its destiny is in destruction. Look at it in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 27. Go back to NLT and uh, look at verse number 17. It says, Cast is anyone who steals property from a neighbor by moving a boundary maker, and all the people reply, Amen. Cast is anyone 
Cast is anyone who leads the blind person astray to the road, and all the people will reply, Amen. Jacolimirwe oya chamio muzibe oa maso kuva mukubo abantu bona ne bagamba nti amina. Cast is anyone who denies justice for foreigners, orphans, or widows, and all the people will reply, Amen. Jacolimirwe oyo achamie songa eya muna guanga na natali na chita we na 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 abantu bona ne bagamba nti amina. Go to the throne of chapter twenty-five. E chama teka bili mutano. And let's look at verses number uh, number seventeen. Actually, this, that's what I meant. Twenty-five and seventeen. The Bible has says, Bible Never forget what the Amaleks did to you as we came from Egypt. Number eighteen. They attacked you when you were exhausted and weary. They struck you down. They struck down those who were struggling behind. They had no fear of God. Therefore. When the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies in the land, he's giving you as special possession. You must destroy the Amalekites and erase their memory from under heaven. Never forget this. Brethren, there are things that are have attacked us. On the way, when we were growing, when we were young, we, haven't, we had no power over them. Things came and attacked us. It doesn't mean the Lord was not seeing. But here, there's such a declaration. When the Lord says, Never forget what that enemy did to you. So destroy them completely. Erase them. No memory of them. And never forget this. I don't know about you, but when you are poor, there are many things that you cannot do. There are places that you cannot go. There is certain food you cannot eat. There is a dress or a trouser or a shirt you cannot put on. Yet others are doing the same. And you have a question. Why me? Why us? But when God's time comes, he says don't forget erase that time completely I came to speak to your heart I came to speak to your soul our God is the sovereign Lord he's the head of the armies in heaven and when he says he does not lie when he says it will happen it will happen if your time has not come it's about to come God is going to settle accounts with your enemies I want you today to write down those enemies it might be one enemy maybe two but the Lord has promised us time has come he has decided He's going to settle men and women of God. According to my understanding, sin is our greatest enemy. All the way from the Garden of Eden, our enemy came and began to engage Eve in the talk to make us sin against God. And actually, he managed to succeed by managing. Eva to eat the fruit that was forbidden. He also came in and the New Testament because remember that sin came in two by one man and victory and righteousness came through also one man. 
devil even tried this one man. In the book of Luke chapter 4. Verse number 3. The Bible says. And the devil said to him. If you are the son of God. Change this stone into a loaf of bread. And then he answers. Jesus told him. No, 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 please. The scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. So by this one man we won and we have the victory because people do not live by bread alone. Therefore, we must completely destroy every sin that entangles itself with us. Do you know where your weakness is? Please fight it. Destroy it completely from your body. Destroy it completely from your life. God has called you for better things. God has called you for victory. And he's ready to settle accounts with your enemy. It's because... You are failing to destroy that enemy completely. Let's go back in First Samuel and look at verse number 4. 15, 15 look at verse number 4. Four. The Bible says, and so mobilized his army at Telaim. They were 200,000 soldiers. And 10,000 men from Judah. What do I want to talk about here? The army that is on your side is great. The army is ready to attack. And that army are the angels of God. Look at it at verse number 5. Then Saul and his army went to a town of Amalekites and lay in wait in the valley. And my understanding that God and the angels are ready to fight on our side. We just need to act, do our part. Because the army on our side is just great. Look at it in verse number 6. The Bible has said, Verse number 6 says, Saul sent this warning to the Kenites. Move away from where the Amalekites live. Or you will die with them. Please make sure you move away from the enemy's side. Because when God comes to settle accounts with your enemy, you must not be found be part of the enemy's side. He has said, or else you will die with them. I came to speak to you. You know that which does not please the Lord. Work on yourself. Don't allow sin to entangle with you. Our God has declared He's going to settle those accounts. That's the challenge that the enemy had on you. But he must not find any sin with you. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. There must be a moving away. Hearken to the orders that God gives us. Or else there will be disaster. Be pure. Be holy. Because he's a holy God. So when he comes down to set accounts, you will be on the other side. And the enemy will face it. The enemy will have his blow. Hallelujah. Verse number seven says, Then so slaughtered the Amalekites from Havila all the way to Shal. Saul na kubaba mereki okuve kavira ngogende suri. East of Egypt. E e e chole kera misiri. 
His men spared Agag's life and kept the best of the sheep and, and goats. This is the problem. It's not about what appeals to you. Because the Bible says in the last verse, they destroyed only what was worthless or the poor quality. What appealed to them is what they destroyed. But I came to speak to you, you have no choice. When God says, destroy completely. Don't destroy what appeals to you. You know what God doesn't want. You have the spirit of God with you. This one has no choice. It's not about what appeals to you. But the command is to destroy everything. Please don't hinder. Don't slow down. Or don't delay God's Work. by your negative actions. Settling accounts results in a conclusion of business dispute over money. That's in accounts. Okay. Settling accounts results in a conclusion of a business uh, uh, dispute. Over money. I, I mean, when in a business and you have a dispute over money. And then they come and tell you, let's settle accounts. What they are meaning, you can but even pay less. But they, they, they are tired with it. They want to settle it completely. So I, have, I want you to have that question in your mind. Can we settle accounts, please? Can we settle accounts? But God is not going to come and have a meeting with the enemy. He has decided. Yes, as they were. He wants to set accounts. Are you ready? If you are ready, say amen. And if you are ready, I promise you. As, as I was reading these verses, because it came from all the way from Exodus. When Amalekites attacked Israel, for no reason, I know there are things that are, have been tangled with you for no reason. Why should poverty entangle you for no reason? Why, that that for no reason. Why am I suffering? For no reason. God has decided. He's going to set the accounts. And lastly, he says, I am going to erase Amalek completely. And he warns by saying, Do not forget. You will talk it over to your children. And your children, children, and they glorify the name of the Lord. Today we want to say, Father, settle the accounts with the enemy of our brothers. Settle the accounts with the enemy of our brothers in India. That is COVID-19. Settle the accounts with the brothers in Brazil. That is COVID-19. COVID Please make mention of what you want the Lord to settle with. With you, with your enemies, because we are the point. Talk to God about your enemy. And the Lord has decided He's going to settle those accounts. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have done my part. The last part is yours. The Bible has said Bible that you are the Lord of the heaven's armies. And if you have declared who can say no, I pray in the name of Jesus that you may settle those accounts with my sister. Settle the accounts of my brothers. Settle the accounts of the nations. You know what is my father entangling with with us. You know what we are suffering for nothing. But because you are the same God as it is written in the book of Hebrews you are the same yesterday 
today Lero. and forever what you did during the times of Saul and Samuel. Samuel. Let us see it happen in our days by settling the accounts. Let the enemy know it from today that you have declared you settle the accounts of gospel messengers. You settle the accounts of your children in Uganda. You settle the accounts of your children in diaspora. I trust in your power because I have tested your power. I have trusted in your hand. I testify about your hand. I have tested your power. Father, we allow you to settle those accounts. And we shall testify when it's all done. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And everybody say Amen. God bless you. We are waiting to hear testimony when the Lord has settled accounts.